Hello everyone, my name is Lachlan. I write for Money Morning and I'm also an analyst on Exponential Stock Investor. Now today I'll be talking about a specific company, it's a pot stock, it's called Creso Pharma. So if you follow the small cap space in Australia, uh, you'll probably have heard of this particular company. I've got the long term chart up here. So this goes back about five years. So we'll look at the charts. Um, and then we'll then dig into some of the announcements that led to Creso Pharma's remarkable rise in the last month and a half or so. And hopefully along the way, you'll sort of uh, pick up some tips and tricks that I use to analyze small cap stocks. So yeah, as we said before, this is a long-term chart. Um, it's a pretty steep uh, and relentless downtrend that went from about November of 2017 all the way to July 2020. Um, and there was a little moment here where it threatened to punch a bit higher, but it actually respected this trend line uh, pretty consistently. But let's dive into, I guess, the, the last 12 months of trading. So it got as low as about 2.5 cents here and basically stayed range bound and sideways until about early December. And it started moving, um, yeah, right about the, the turn of December. It even went as high as about 40, what is that, 47 cents from uh, a low point there of, Three cents. So that's just an absolutely remarkable rise, especially in the world of small caps. Um, now, there's one thing you could do on this retracement here is perhaps put in a Fibonacci retracement. Uh, but I won't get to that just yet. Let's, um, let's have a look at what started off some of these uh, you know, big moves for Creso Pharma. So they've got an operation in Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, and this is their Minova facility. And it had been a long time uh, coming for this company. I've talked, sort of uh, watched this company uh, over the last two or three years. So I'm, I'm relatively, relatively well versed in what it does. So right here, 21 September, 2020, uh, they've got their first retail PO or purchase order. And it was just for a small amount, uh, 180 grand Canadian. But this was, uh, this was sort of a, a, a bit of a breakthrough for Creza. And if you look back here in late 2020, um, didn't move too much, but this was sort of the beginning of the big move for Creza. And I'll just go through kind of chronologically what, what these uh, announcements were. So 7th October, you've got uh, Bruce Linton uh, of Canopy, a very large North American based uh, cannabis company. Uh, he joined as a strategic advisor. So we've got a little bit of movement uh, in terms of leadership here from the company. And then uh, on the same Day actually, this was uh, marked as price sensitive, so they received commitments totaling about nine million Aussie. So previously, I think, and this is just my opinion, but a lot of the sideways trading for Creza uh, for that period between, I guess, June, July, twenty twenty, and prior to just before this move, was, I think, hinging largely on. Uh, uncertainty in the market that they could continue to fund their operations, hence the, uh, the valuation of about 2.5 cents that persisted for a while. So they, uh, they got firm commitments for 9 million Aussie. That was 7th October. Then there was a little bit of a, a wait in terms of uh, news flow. And then 15 December 2020, uh, the TGA, the Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia, rescheduled CBD. So 
Prezzo actually has a number of different uh, cannabinoid products available, uh, including their Canaquix, which is, I believe, a lozenge. So this was certainly, pardon me, uh, important for Prezzo. And if you go look back at the chart, that 15 of December, you know, there was, uh, there was quite a big bar up uh, a bit later. But there was sort of a flurry of uh, announcements in December. And this is reflected in some of the movements we saw on ASX listed pot stocks during this period. Uh, this was shortly after the US presidential election. So there was uh, a view out there that the US presidential uh, election outcome would favor from a regulatory perspective a number of uh, Australia, uh, sorry, Australian listed pot stocks with exposure to the US market. So this was December 7th. Then another one here, 3rd of December. So this was uh, related to a move, movement in the regulatory sphere with regards to the United Nations. Then you've got another one here, 30 November, uh, EU uh, CBD. Um, and there's a, there's a heat more around the December. Minova expanding into a different type of cannabinoid product. And then there's one on 8th January. So uh, Democratic majority in the Senate. Senate to further uh, aid Crezzo. So, I mean, there's just, there was an immense amount of news flow. Uh, but you also have to, even when something moves very quickly on news flow, you also have to be cognizant of the actual trajectory of the business. So, this is their quarterly activities report, at least 29 January. A lot of positive things in these highlights section. But um, I guess the key thing to remember is that you'd want a company that can actually produce revenue or earnings. So at this stage, Crezzo would have been valued at, say, uh, you know, its current market capitalization is hovering around 200 million. Um, but you you'd want to take a quick look at the quarterly. So they had seven hundred and nine thousand dollars Australian in receipts from customers, and then relative to that, quite a few administrative and corporate costs, uh, staff costs as well, product manufacturing and operating costs. So just relative to this uh, one point two entry B you can see that the actual products they've sold aren't even covering the product manufacturing operating costs. But I guess when a company moves that quickly and their fortunes change, what the market is doing is pricing in uh, potential future growth. So fundamental oriented value investors would really turn their nose up this kind of stock. Um, but then you can also consider that they have nearly at this stage in the January release, uh, 6 million cash and cash equivalents. Then the next thing you could do is go back and look at the net cash used in operating activities. And then it's 3.8 million against uh, uh, a total cash balance of about 6 million. And one of the things you should be doing if you're looking at a uh, sort of quarterly report is thinking just immediately without looking at the company's own calculations, how much cash do they have and how much cash are they going through? This is referred to as a burn rate. Uh, and that's one way of looking at small caps. So you don't, you don't want to, I guess, jump straight into a stock without knowing some of these financial details. Um, and then there are a couple of other announcements around this period record start to financial year 2021, uh, some strong demand in Europe, Latin America, and South Africa, 
So you can get a picture of a company that wants to quickly grow its revenue base, even though it had quite limited receipts from customers relative to its market cap. So 740% in customer receipts. And that is the $709,000 I highlighted in their quarterly. So that's, that's immense growth in, in receipts, but uh, from a sort of ratio perspective, it would still be quite out of whack with, um, with their market cap. But again, these are, these are just very broad generalizations about how you'd look at a, a company like Prezzo after a massive rise. And I just wanna finish on one final note about small caps, they're extremely volatile. Uh, they're known to be quite risky, but unless you educate yourself and you're, you're going to really struggle understanding small caps. Uh, there's one article I'd like to show you because of course you've probably heard about the GameStop phenomena in uh, the US. There's a massive battle on there between, pardon me, uh, the, the trading platforms and the hedge funds and regulators on one side and then you have a number of organized retail investors. And they, I've, I've written uh, about this phenomenon a couple of times, and you can catch those articles on Monday morning, where a number of our editors talk about what's happening there. But I just want to highlight some recent comments by Peter Costello, who's chairman of the Australian Future Fund. Now, in it, it says, and this is quoting Costello, it's from the Financial Review, says, Unbelievable returns on companies that don't make profits, uh, particularly technology companies. Now, Crezzo would probably fall into this type of category, a company that uh, are not profitable yet. They have strong revenue growth, but it's sort of a, it hasn't been proven over a long period of time. So what we're seeing in the market is a lot of speculative action in small caps. And then you also see a number of value-oriented funds who are playing catch-up and miss the uh, quick pivot to growth stocks that happened in the March market rub. And there's a lot of bitterness out there from, I guess, professional finance, or at least elite finance, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, that retail investors are doing quite well. Um, so really, there, I, I previously referred to this as financial class warfare, but uh, just because you've been successful doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing here. It's just that there's been this fundamental shift in the way investment uh, patterns play out. So I just encourage you to continue educating yourself about small caps. Uh, a great resource, as I always say, is Exponential Stock Investor. It's a small cap newsletter that me and Brian Dintz run. And uh, it's a great way, if you're interested in small caps, to start to understand how they work and potentially how to be successful investing in them. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Crezzo Pharma and I guess the potential that small caps can have and also a overview of some various different ways to understand news flow, uh, quarterly announcements, and, uh, and to look at charts. So have a safe week, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye.